In this video, we will invert a matrix step by step. But not just any matrix, we're going to look in particular at a matrix with only elements on the diagonal and the off diagonal, and all of the other entries will be zero. Now, inverting a matrix oftentimes leads to a lot of pain, because there's many steps that you need to go through. Now, for such a specific matrix, we will see that the process gets simplified quite a lot. In fact, the steps that get forgotten most of the times are not necessary for this case. So let's see how we do this step by step. First, we need to calculate the determinant of this matrix. So we can write the determinant in this notation with the vertical lines. 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 2, 0, 1 are the matrix elements. Now calculating the determinant of a general 3 by 3 matrix already involves quite some work. However, because we have this special structure, we can calculate the determinant by doing the following. We take the product of the diagonal elements, which is simply 1 times 3 times 1, and we subtract from this, and we subtract from this the product of the elements on the off diagonal, which is simply minus 2 times 3 times 2. Now, obviously, this simply gives us 3 minus 12, which is of course minus 9. And you can check that this is indeed the determinant by going through the motion of the general way of solving a determinant, which is simply taking this 1 and multiplying it with this determinant of these 2 by 2 elements. So we get 1 times 3 minus 0. And this will of course simply be 3. Then we take this 0 and we multiply it with the determinant of the elements that are left behind. But since we multiply with 0, we get 0. And then we take this 2 and we multiply it with the determinant of this 2 by 2 matrix, which is of course minus 6. And we then get the same result, which is minus 9. So the first step in the inversion process is already tackled. Now the second step, the step where oftentimes most errors are made, is to calculate the minors of this matrix. And to do so, let's first rewrite our matrix. So we have 1, 0, 2, 0. 3, 0, 2, 0, 1. And now we have to calculate the minors of this matrix. So let's see how we do so. For the element on the first row in the first column, we delete the first row and the first column, and we calculate the determinant of the remaining elements, which in this case will simply be 3 minus 0, so that would be 3. So our first element is 3. Then for the element on the first row and second column, we again delete the first row and second column. We look at the determinant of the remaining elements. So it will be 0 times 1 minus 0 times 2, which is of course 0. So this element will be 0. Then for the element on the first row and third column, we delete the first row and third column. Look at the determinant that is of the remaining elements. We get 0 minus 6, which is of course minus 6 and we write down minus six. Now the same process can be done for all of the remaining six elements. And if we do so, which can be done quite quickly, we get zero, minus three, zero, minus six, zero, and three. And this will be our matrix minor. So it will be the matrix M, the matrix of our minors. Now at this point, you might ask that we didn't really skip any steps yet. So what is the advantage of having such a structure of a matrix? Well, the next two steps that we need to do can be dropped. Namely, the third step is to go from the minors to the cofactors of this matrix. And the cofactors are obtained from the minors by mapping this checker pattern of pluses and minuses on our minor matrix. Pluses on the diagonal and off diagonal, and minuses on the other elements. However, we see that because our minor matrix only has zeros on the elements where we have to apply a minus sign, and we know that minus zero is of course just zero, nothing changes at all. And the cofactors are just the minors itself. So this step could actually be skipped. The next step in our process is to transpose this matrix, meaning that we have to swap the rows and columns of our matrix. However, also here we see that our matrix M is actually symmetric, which means that the elements on either side of the diagonal are equal to each other. 
zeros and a minus six. Thus, swapping the rows and columns doesn't change all that much. It doesn't change anything for a matter of fact. So we can also skip this step. Now, the fifth step is bringing this all together. We know that a to the power of minus one, so the inverse of our matrix, is simply one over our determinant, which we calculate to be minus nine, multiplied by this matrix that we have. So that would be three, zero, minus six, zero, minus three, zero, minus six, zero, and three. Now we can still rewrite this a little bit by bringing a minus three outside of this matrix. So we get one divided by three, because this minus nine gets canceled with a minus three. And then we simply divide each element in our matrix with minus three. So we get minus one, zero, two, zero, one, zero, plus two, zero, and minus one. And what is always a very good idea to do is to check whether we made any mistakes. Now, by calculating the inverse of a matrix, we get a very straightforward procedure to check whether we did make any mistakes. So we have A multiplied by the inverse of A has to be equal to the unity matrix, which in this case simply is a three by three matrix with ones on the diagonal and all of the other elements have to be zero. And this is simply a matrix multiplication to see if this matrix multiplied with our original one does indeed give the unity matrix. And this is how the inversion process is simplified for matrices with such a structure. If you learned something, give this video a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one.